Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna try and answer the question, should I use an app to distribute content or should I use an app workspace? That's coming up. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, big question. I get asked this a lot. What's the right way to distribute content? I just wanna do it through an app workspace. I've got the app workspace, I got all the content, why not just use that? Or, hey, I can publish these apps, let me do it that way. I will freely admit that up until this video, the recommendation I've strongly gave to enterprise customers and just to any folks looking to distribute reports is to use an app from an app workspace. That was the guidance. It was use an app for everything. If you wanna do consumption, do it through the app. It gave you the read-only access. It allows you to do row-level security. It's, it's everything, right? Do it through the app for distribution and then for your actual authors and your content stuff, do that through an app workspace. But the viewer role came out for the new app workspaces and it brought some things that maybe changes this conversation just a little bit, just a little bit. All right, let's start off with looking at what my recommendation has been this whole time, which is to distribute stuff through an app. All right, enough of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop and let's dig into this a little bit. All right, so I'm signing into Power BI and I am under my account and I'm the admin for everything, right? So I'm the one that's setting up all of the workspaces and the content and apps and whatnot. And if we look at our workspace list, there's two workspaces we're gonna focus on. One is AdventureWorks, which has the diamond next to it, meaning it's premium. And then we've got the non-premium workspace, which doesn't have the diamond, it's very lonely. And just remember, a diamond is a workspace's best friend. So inside of this workspace, I've got my content, right? So we are in my premium workspace, I've got all my content and whatnot, and I've published an app out there in the land of apps. My original recommendation was have all content distribution go through apps, right? And what's the reason for that? Is because the user, the end user, wouldn't be able to get into the actual app workspace because that was a pro feature. So let's jump over to my non-pro user. So this is John, he's not a pro user. We can verify that by going into personal settings and we can see that they are, a, they are just free, right? They're not, they're not a pro user. All right. And we'll see that, yes, I've got both workspaces listed for John, but what happens is if I try to go to the workspace, boom, I can't get into the workspace. It's a pro feature, right? I need a pro license to get into the workspace and it's telling me that by saying, hey, you can sign up for pro free. This is the free 60 day pro trial. That's why I would say if you want non-pro users to get access to the content, you've got to distribute it through apps. And so if I go to apps, and then I come into, I've got my, my workspace or my apps here. So I've got my AdventureWorks and my non-premium. So I go into AdventureWorks, it's backed by premium. Bam, I can get into the app as a free user. This is great. And you'll also notice for my non-premium, if I try and access that as a free user, boom, I get that lovely invitation again to try Pro for free for 60 days. So in order to use apps as a non-pro user, I need it to be backed by premium and then I can consume that content. So this has been my recommendation forever. Even before the new workspace experience, my recommendation was apps. Okay, let's jump back and we'll look at, so in AdventureWorks, what I did, the reason why the non-pro user had those workspaces listed, if I go into access, we can see here that John Doe, who is the free user, is listed as a viewer role. So when you go to add those users now, I have admin, member, contributor, and now viewer. So viewer is awesome. This is the read-only access to the workspace. And we can see that Mr. John Doe is a viewer inside of the workspace itself. All right, and if I go to my non-premium workspace, and we go up to access, same thing. John Doe is listed as a viewer. So that is why if we go back to John Doe, that's how I see these workspaces in the list, right? Because the, he, John Doe is actually a member of that workspace. And so they're gonna show up in the workspace list. But like I showed you before, if I try and go to it, bam, I'm, you know, I can't get into it. I can see it, it's a little bit of a tease, but it asked me to try pro for free so that I can actually get into that content. All right, enter the viewer role. So the viewer role changes some things and brings some awesome things with it. And this was really the moment where my head was whoosh, like, this was, this was incredible. So let's check this out. 
So remember, John Doe is a viewer member of both workspaces. All right, so I showed you before, if I go to non-pro, try to get into it, bam, I get blocked. I need a pro license to get into the workspace. But what about the other workspace? My AdventureWorks is backed by premium. Look at that. My viewer role, my non-pro viewer can get into the workspace and can view the content and actually see what's going on. So now there's consistency between the apps and the workspaces in terms of what a non-pro user can do in terms of content distribution. This opens up so many possibilities and changes the game of how we think about distributing content inside of Power BI, which brought me back to the original question of what's the better route to take? Should I do it through app distribution for everything, for consumption, or should I look at app workspaces? And now the answer is, my, my original answer was apps all the time, because that's the only way a non-pro user is gonna ever be able to get to it. But now with this viewer role, it depends, right? So you, we need to think a little bit about how are we actually distributing? For the case of this, where John Doe's my non-pro user and getting into the premium backed app workspace to view content, this is great for like small team interactions, right? So this is gonna be where, you know, I've just got this real startup type workspace that I'm working on a very specific project. I've only got two or three people that I wanna actually collaborate with on these items. This would be a great example of where, look, I'm just gonna add the non-pro user as a viewer in this workspace so we can collaborate together on the content and actually use that content inside of Power BI. But what if I want to distribute this and this is a business level report, this is my central IT teams creating these reports and I want to distribute this out to basically everyone in the company is going to look at this. Maybe it's an HR report, maybe it's a specific product that I'm working on that I've got 50, 60 people that are part of it and I want them to be able to consume daily reports of run rates or something of that nature go with the app. So the app is going to be that mass distribution to non-pro users or to anyone in the organization when it's backed by premium and I wanna su supply a custom experience, maybe a custom navigation, supply it with instructions and links to videos and documentations and feedback forms, apps are the way to go. So wide distribution, large distribution, I'm gonna use an app, maybe it's small team interactions, I may go with the app workspace at that point if it's backed by premium, and then my non-pro users can also be viewers and get into that app workspace as well. There's other reasons why you'd wanna use an app as well. So the app, like I said, it provides that custom navigation and gives you that ability to add experiences as part of it now. So you can do that embedded content with either documentation or videos. You can add in forms. So maybe you have a Power Apps form or an Office form that you're collecting information on. Like, hey, how useful is this report content or something of that nature? That's a great reason to use an app as well. So maybe it's not necessarily wide distribution, but you wanna provide that custom experience along with it. So there's a lot of reasons why you would look at an app, but for that, again, that small team interaction where I've only got a handful of users and I don't want the burden of updating the app, App Workspace is now an option for you if it's backed by premium. It's incredible. The viewer role is really where all of this magic comes from in combination with Power BI Premium. It opens up a lot of possibilities. And also what I really love about this is it adds in that consistent behavior for non-pro users. So now it's not, we're just gonna get blocked on certain things. I can get into the things that I need to as a non-pro user if it's backed by Premium and it simplifies the understanding of license management. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. Does this viewer role just open up new possibilities for you? Which way are you gonna go? Are you gonna go apps? Are you gonna go app workspaces only, which I know some people do, or are you gonna do that mix between the two and figure out what the best fit is? Let me know down in the comments. Let's continue the conversation. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.